What's going on operators and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we've got the Ear Pro and the iPro on and we're hanging out at the range. We're going to be doing some testing of this little Chris Vector here and I say little because this guy is actually in 22 long rifle. Uh, really, really fun little thing to shoot. I've had a chance to play around with this for a little bit already. And if you haven't seen my previous review of the nine millimeter CRB version, uh, make sure to link it up in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. This is of course a much smaller caliber than the nine mil. This is the 22 long rifle. And it's a really good option for if you're looking for a Chris Vector, but you wanna spend less money on the firearm itself and also on the ammunition because the ammo is like 10 cents around. It's dirt cheap. So. Uh, as always, we're very quickly going to go through uh, from the front, from the muzzle to the butt, as always. Now, uh, I have to be very cognizant of where we're pointing this firearm because we are at a live range and our uh, safe direction is going to be that way. So to show you the other side of the gun, I'm just going to flip it upside down just for the purposes of safety. Now, just to make sure, of course, that we are completely unloaded. We have nothing in the chamber and we have absolutely nothing in the magazine well as well. Uh, we've already proven the firearm. So let's go ahead and talk about this from the front to the back. Okay, so starting at the very front here, uh, this is gonna be the SBR version. Uh, so non-restricted actually, even though it is a little bit shorter, but because of the length of this thing, we are still over 26 and a half inches from the front to the back. So no need for this thing to be restricted. It would be very weird if that was the case, especially for a 22. But that being said, we have a nice little faux suppressor here. This kind of looks a little bit like almost an integrated suppressor sticking out just a little bit, just the tip. Uh, but uh, it is a faux suppressor because unfortunately in Canada, we can't be trusted to have suppressors, even though we want to be nice to our neighbors and not blow their ears out. On the very front here, we also have some small pick rails. This is going to be great for things like flashlights, lasers, what have you. And again, very carefully, we'll just rotate that over so you can see there. We do have one under the barrel as well. And uh, that is gonna be a bit of a longer one. As you can see there, we've got a nice long vertical grip installed on that. Of course, on these things, you can, of course, go with the integral grip here. The problem with that is, uh, as you'll see on the other side here, if we can get a picture for you, um, you are gonna have some issues with releasing your magazine by accident if you're not careful because the mag release is on this side, so facing me, uh, if I can maybe turn this around to show you, the mag release is gonna be right there, right? So if you press that by accident, you're gonna have your mag fall out and you're not gonna have a great day at the range. Moving a little bit further, uh, there's not much else happening on this side of the firearm. As you can see, we have our ejection port here. It's about the same size as the nine mil version, maybe a little tiny bit smaller uh, and uh, eject it does. It actually has no problems whatsoever. We've been running some pretty inexpensive blazer ammo. Uh, this is one that I reviewed in my 22 LR ammo video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out, but very, very inexpensive ammo and uh, very easy to get. And this thing has had no problems chewing it up, spitting it out uh, like it's nobody's business. Other than that, we uh, have nothing really else on this side other than, of course, the standard vector logo there. We'll talk about the Super V recoil mitigation system a little bit here. Other than that, we've got a trigger uh, it's actually a really good feeling trigger for a 22. In fact, I would argue it actually feels a little bit better than that of the nine millimeter, at least for my personal taste. Now I'm not sure, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, if there are upgrade kits for triggers and other things like that uh, out in the wild somewhere, you know, to, to upgrade this a little bit. If there are, then I, yeah, I would definitely recommend that you do an upgrade if you want a better, better trigger feel. But honestly, it feels pretty good already and uh, it's very comfortable and you can really squeeze off a lot of shots in a row uh, if that's what you want to do. Of course, these are semi-automatic, which means one pull of the trigger equals one cartridge uh, being expended, uh, parted with its bullet and one bullet going down range. And uh, the grip is actually pretty good. It's, I've got a sizable hand. Now, as you can see, we have a little bit of an attachment here to the rest of the firearm down here. I quite like that. It keeps your hand in one place. And uh, even if you slip a little bit, it, it helps you keep your grip quite well. Uh, one of the things that I like is despite this cutlass style grip, as you may have seen in my Tavor video, that's uh, got a very similar uh, sort of grip to it, uh, as they call it a cutlass grip. We do actually also have uh, a trigger a guard here, which is really, really nice to have. Unfortunately, on the Tavor, the original grip was a cutlass grip, which was nice, but it didn't have that integrated trigger guard. So you had to be very, very careful moving your fingers in and around the trigger area. Uh, this one, 
not the case. As you can see, we do have a nice trigger guard here. And of course, a nice cutlass style grip here with a pretty good sizable grip and a little bit of texture on here too. Now, mind you, this is all polymer. And that's actually a good thing because if this thing was made out of metal, it would weigh a lot. In fact, for a 22, especially with the optics on it, it does already have a pretty good weight to it. Uh, we're probably looking at about, at about eight pounds. Uh, it's probably a little bit less than that bone stock. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and go back a little further here. In fact, before we get to this thing back here, I wanna talk about the flip-up sights here. So we've got some nice irons. These are fairly high as well, so you can co-witness with a red dot if you happen to have one. In this case, we do, and we're able to co-witness quite well. Unfortunately, with my ear pro and my hat, I'm not able to get super down low, but it is just enough to co-witness with this Riton red dot that we have here. Now, the Riton is mounted with a cantilever a little bit higher than I personally would like. This, of course, was a rifle generously donated to the channel temporarily uh, by my good friend Max for review. So if it were me, I'd probably want to go with a low profile here if I wanted to co-witness with the sights. But that being said, it's absolutely possible. They click in really nicely and adjustable for a windage and elevation as well. If you've noticed, we do have that uh, a right and red dot here and we do have a 3X uh, magnifier here that can flip in and out based on your needs. Today, we're just at a 10 yard range, so we're not gonna need that. But other than that, moving a little bit further towards the back of the firearm here, we have a six position stock. So that's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. <laughs> There's five and then there's six and you do have a little readout here so that you can very quickly see where you're at. Me personally, uh, if I'm using just the red dot without anything, I do prefer to be either on number two or number three. I think that one, that feels quite nice there. Yep, that's perfect. So it's nice to have that adjustability. The ergonomics are definitely there. And if we look on the other side here, we do have uh, your safety here. So this is gonna be safety or fire. Of course, no select fire here because we're in Canada and, and we can't be trusted with suppressors. What makes you think they're gonna trust us with select fire? That being said, we also have our bolt release right here. There is a last round bolt hold open, which is nice. And of course we have our mag release there and our magazine goes in the bottom. We do also have a little storage solution here. I think there may be actually a I don't know if there's something missing there. I think there, there's supposed to be a little cap here, um, but there is a little bit of storage here in the actual grip as well. So you can put a little bottle of oil or what have you in there. Other than that, the star of the show is the uh, V, the Super V recoil mitigation system. And as if you've seen, if you've watched my nine millimeter vector video, it's still very prominent here on the 22 LR. And the idea is that basically the bolt is moving back and down into this chamber here. And what that's doing is it's counteracting both felt recoil as well as muzzle rise. And of course, you're not really gonna feel a whole lot of that when it comes to a 22, because it's gonna be a very light firing cartridge, but having that Super V system in a 22 on top of it already being a light cartridge to fire, it just makes this thing butter. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to shoot, it's a lot of fun. And for the longest time, I actually thought I was gonna buy one of these in 22 because I was just so excited when I shot it. So uh, that's gonna do it for the front to back. Let's go ahead and put a few rounds through it. We've got some nice magazines here. And before you say anything, yes, they're pinned, unfortunately. Let's get some rounds down range and see how accurate this thing is. Hey everybody, we're back in the studio now after a fun-filled day at the range testing out the Chris Vector in 22. And uh, we're gonna talk about the positives and the negatives, the pros and the cons, as well as of course, just my final conclusions and whether you should pick one up for yourself. I hope very much, by the way, that you've enjoyed the compilation, that little montage that we put in. That was a ton of fun to do. I know it was a very short one, but there's more to come if you enjoy it. So do let us know down below. Before we go any further though, a very special thank you for the guys at the range. There was some consideration, of course, for letting us shoot there. And now everything is in order and we are allowed to shoot there going forward, which is gonna take this channel to a whole nother level. So I know a bunch of you guys from the range, the administration that you guys are watching and uh, I just wanted to say thank you. I really appreciate it and I'm sure my viewers will as well. We're gonna have a lot more awesome videos just like this one being shot out in the element that these firearms are meant to perform in which is outside at the range. So thanks very much for being a part of making this channel the best that it could possibly be. 
All right, moving on to pros and cons and my final conclusion. Okay, fellas, so let's explore some of the cons here. The first one is gonna be a doozy and it's one that we look at pretty much all the time, whether you're buying firearms or lettuce, <laughs> you know, it's price. And that's the one thing that, especially in this economy is affecting a lot of us. If you're in the market for a new firearm, that's great that you have a little bit of that extra money to spend, but is it worth it spending maybe your entire budget or the majority of it on a Chris Vector when you could probably spend half of that on a new firearm, still get something that's reliable and accurate and pretty fun to use and still affordable to shoot because it's all gonna be shooting the same cartridge and maybe spend the rest of the money on a couple of upgrades. Get yourself maybe a cheap red dot and maybe some extra ammo, maybe a few extra mags. Well, that choice is gonna be up to you, but unfortunately, price is gonna be a con here for the Vector in 22 because it's about the price, if not a little bit more than a Ruger 1022 takedown and a little bit more than double the price of a non-takedown carbine 1022. Of course, we're a wife-friendly channel here, fellas, so we're not gonna be naming any prices, but as you can tell just from those two examples, this Vector is gonna cost you an arm and a leg compared to some of the other offerings on the market. And so again, this is something you have to take into consideration. Do you have that money to burn? And if you don't, what's a better use of it, right? Uh, that being said, I don't wanna take away from the positives, which we'll talk about in a minute, but that is definitely something to think about. All right, fellas, so next up, let's talk a little bit about cleanliness and how often you're gonna have to clean this thing. Now, as an example, I have a 22 long rifle rifle, and that particular rifle, which I will not name, <laughs> I can take that to the range, I can put about two, 300 rounds down range, bring it home, stick it in the safe as long as it's dry, right? And repeat that about three or four times before I have to take it apart and actually just give it a nice deep clean. Now, at that point, it's still completely functional. It's just a good idea to clean all the gunk out of it so that it's operating at its peak performance. The same can be said for many firearms. If you maintain them properly, they will work better and for longer. Well, the Chris Vector is interesting in that regard because it's something that you're gonna have to do a lot more often. And if you're not a fan of cleaning your firearms often, you might not be a fan of the Vector in 22. Now, if you've seen my video of the Vector in 9 mil, which you can catch right up there, one of my chief complaints about that firearm was that it was just very dirty. And I'm not talking about the fact that I bought it in Alpine White, which was definitely a mistake, but it was just a dirty gun. The blowback system made it so difficult to clean because it would just get so dirty even after one range visit. And I'm not even talking about the outside. The inside was just an absolute catastrophe. And it's not even the nine millimeter ammo that was at fault. It was just the nature of the blowback system in the action. And that resulted in a ton more grime and carbon and buildup both on the outside and the inside of the firearm. And it's part of the reason why I got rid of it, if I'm honest. I just had to clean that thing too much. And what was involved in cleaning it was basically just completely taking it apart and getting into all those little complex geometries inside the, the frame of the gun. And it was just, it's just a complete pain in the ass to do. Now, of course, the Chris Vector in 22 is exactly the same shape. It's got the same kind of arrangement. It's got the upper and the lower that fit in the same way. It's still got those four bolts that hold everything together. And while it's really nice just to push out the four pins and pull everything apart, it does give itself a little bit more accessibility when it comes to cleaning. But the actual cleaning just takes so much longer because you gotta get into all those little nooks and crannies and crevices and you gotta do it so much more often than pretty much any other firearm, at least in my personal experience, that's been the case. So because of that, I mean, that is one of the reasons why I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, if you're somebody that really doesn't enjoy cleaning their guns and doing it often, you might be kind of put off by this. Now, again, that being said, if you keep it in good condition, it'll be shooting well, but in my experience, at least testing the firearm at the range, I've noticed that it does get dirty very, very fast, and that actually does affect performance. I actually had to switch from lead round nose to a copper jacketed projectile because it would just chew up and not even spit out the lead round nose stuff. It would get constant jams, constant failure to feeds. It would have failure to eject. It was just really difficult to work with. And I found that to be the case, not at the beginning when the gun was nice and clean because we basically shot this thing brand new, uh, but as we probably put about three to 400 rounds. And it does make sense because in the manual, Chris does say that you should be cleaning the firearm at least once every four to 500 rounds or so. Now I'm paraphrasing, it's probably around there, but if you know the exact number, feel free to correct me in the comments. That is besides the fact that 22 long rifle as a cartridge is just intrinsically quite a dirty cartridge. Less so for the jacketed stuff, more so for the lead round nose that is basically just the exposed lead. You're gonna get more fouling and more issues in terms of 
just making a mess inside your firearm. So that coupled with the fact that the blowback system exists in this Chris Vector 22LR, it's definitely a con for me. Uh, it might not be for you, and hey, if you wanna clean your gun every three to 400 rounds, which could mean once every time you go to the range, then by all means. But unfortunately for me, this one's gonna be a con. Okay, so last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about the weight. That is gonna be my last con for this particular rifle. And yeah, I feel like it's just a little too heavy for its segment. Now, don't get me wrong, it's nothing compared to the beast that was the 9mm CRB version, which is a completely different animal, although not all that different. Pretty much the same frame and blowback system on both. Uh, but the CRB was, uh, it's not ideal. Uh, and if you could get one in 22 and the CRB configuration, I would highly recommend against it because you essentially have a full metal faux suppressor on the front of it, the size of an arm that's dragging that front end downwards. And it's just making it incredibly uncomfortable to hold and manipulate. That being said, of course, on the SBR configuration on this 22 that we shot uh, just yesterday, uh, it's not that big of a deal. It, it, the balance is actually pretty nice and I really appreciate that. The little full suppressor that's just sticking out a little bit is enough to make a nice visual statement without being too arbitrarily heavy and then just completely throwing the entire balance of the gun off. However, the weight as compared to some of the other offerings on the market is definitely a bit too much. And for people that are maybe younger shooters, newer shooters, or those people who just want something light, mobile, and accessible, probably not gonna like it as much as something a little bit lighter. So unfortunately, that is a bit of a con for me, but I gotta say that it is built with some really good materials. The polymer on it is really solid, and the overall construction and build quality is very good. And that is our next pro. All right, so finally getting into some pros. And as I mentioned towards the end of that last con, the build quality is definitely one of the pros here. Now, as I mentioned in the past, I've owned a 1022, still do, owned a GSG-16 and owned a couple of other 22 long rifle rifles, or at least borrowed them from my friends. And I found that while they were fun and they have some advantages over the Vector, they were definitely nowhere near the look and feel, nor did they grab anywhere near as much attention as the Vector did. And that is definitely a positive side of the Vector. You're definitely paying a little more money uh, for something that is built better. There is some really seriously good quality polymers here. There is metal here. There is a nice tight fit and finish that you really are not gonna get on a lot of other firearms that are gonna be priced at a lower price point. And potentially that is the reason why they are priced higher than most of the other competitors on the market, kind of putting themselves in a corner almost, but also differentiating themselves from everybody else by doing so. So build quality, definitely a huge pro. All right, so next up is gonna be the size, and that is definitely another huge pro here. There's a lot of other standard type rifles out there, like the 1022 carbine, for example, which is a very accessible and very affordable firearm, but if you don't double that price and get the takedown version, you're really not getting the compact nature of that firearm, and even then, you're not able to discharge anything in that configuration until you've put it back together. The Chris Vector SBR in 22 is completely different from that in that it's already very, very small with that nice little snub nose faux suppressor sticking out the front that adds a nice visual style without imbalancing the rifle at all. Uh, so that's great, but also that six point adjustable stock on the back allows you to accommodate your ergonomics without having to worry about carrying a large firearm with you. That's a huge plus, especially for people who don't have a lot of space to store their firearms or they just wanna travel light and have something that can still be comfortable to shoot, but in a very small footprint. All right, fellas, so let's talk about the elephant in the room here and the real reason why you're not just gonna go out and buy a 22 Chris Vector, but you're gonna get the nine mil, the 45 ACP, and yeah, even the 10 mil. Fuck it, get them all. You know why? Because it's a cool fucking gun. And what do we like more than cool fucking guns? Well, not a whole lot, but I can tell you this, when you go to the range and slap that bitch on the table, not only are you gonna get all the looks, but you're gonna get all the ladies too. And that is a guarantee. Okay, maybe, maybe not that last part, but there's some function behind the form and that's why the looks, <laughs> at least in part, are my last pro for the Chris Vector and not just the 22, but just in general. The Super V recoil mitigation system has been very highly over-engineered by Chris. And I only say over-engineered because it's so much more different than everything else that you can see out there. But why it's cool on a 22, the fact that you probably don't even need it on a 22, is the fact that it makes the firearm so incredibly accessible 
to literally anybody. It completely annihilates any muzzle climb that you would have had, which you probably wouldn't because again, it's a 22, and of course also any felt recoil as well. It just feels like nothing. It feels like air with the fact that you've got a heavier than average firearm in a 22 LR chambering that's got this system built in. I mean, if you can hold it for 20 minutes and not get tired, that's probably your biggest problem other than the price then you ought to buy three of these. I mean, they're just fantastic. Now again, it's a 22. It's going to have ammo that it likes and it doesn't like, so keep that in mind. But overall, let's go ahead and head over to the conclusions and whether you should actually get one of these. All right, fellas, so last but not least, let's talk about the conclusions and final thoughts here and whether I think you should get one. And the answer to that question is gonna be a resounding, yeah, maybe. <laughs> It really depends on you and your use case, right? If you can get past the fact that it is a bit more expensive, even though it's built really premium, and the fact that it shoots a bit more dirty uh, than most other 22s, even though intrinsically 22 can be a fairly dirty cartridge to shoot anyway, the fact that it can be a little bit more difficult to clean, even though it only comes apart with four pins in two halves without any tools, and the fact that it's a bit heavier than all of the other competitors, or at least most of the other competitors on the market, despite the fact that, again, the fit and finish is quite nice, if you can get past all of that, then it's a great showpiece to have. It's a great conversation starter. It's a really nice, unique piece in your collection. And yeah, you should absolutely buy it if you're not gonna feel bad about losing the money, or having spent the money, rather, I should say, on something like this. Now, for me, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be picking one up. And the reason for that isn't because it's, it's not a well-made gun, or you know, I don't like Chris, or whatever. It's gonna be for the same reasons that I sold my nine millimeter CRB uh, Chris Vector, and that is that I just really don't like the fact that it has to be cleaned so often because of that blowback system. Now, I know that it would be my fault if I didn't clean the gun and then complained about it not functioning properly. However, I want to know that if the shit hits the fan tomorrow, even if I've been negligent and not cleaned my firearm in a thousand rounds, that if I need to use it, I'm gonna be able to use it and it's gonna be reliable for me, and I just don't get that feeling with the Vector. One of the other reasons too is that it is a little bit more clunky and kind of heavy feeling. I do prefer something a little bit lighter myself. Obviously, it's not going to be as bad as a full-sized rifle uh, or even the CRB, the 9mm version. But again, that is definitely a downside for me. Now, that's not to say that Chris hasn't done a wonderful job with this firearm. They have made a very unique looking, functioning, and uh, just a very cool gun in general. And they've made a lot of different chamberings, which will appeal to a number of different people. There's even the CRB version, the SBR version, and there's even a pistol version of this available. So there's tons of choice. And we are not exactly spoiled for choice here in Canada. So having those choices, at least the majority of them here, is very nice. And I would thank Chris for giving that to us up here in the frozen wastes of Canada. But uh, unfortunately, it is a no for me, at least personally, but do let me know your thoughts below and that's going to do it for this one. All right, fellas, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that and I hope you found it helpful in some way. And if you did, you can help me out in a big way by just remembering to like and share the video and become a subscriber with notifications turned on so you don't miss my future uploads. Of course, if you want to go a little bit above and beyond, you can help us out by becoming a VIP member in our Discord down below. Uh, also down below is our merch shop. And of course, we do also have the ever popular Super Thanks button if you'd like to buy me a beverage of your choice. And breathe. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. And until then, happy shooting.